How do you do, fellow felons? Wow, that's a mouthful. Today I have some actually uh, pretty damning information and some information that's probably going to be very confusing and upsetting to a lot of you. Many of you by now have probably heard about how the ATF may be considering the pistol braces like the SBA-3 and the SBA-4 to be considered a short-barreled rifle when installed on an AR-15 pistol with a barrel shorter than 16 inches. Many of you are probably asking, am I a felon? Does this make my gun a short-barreled rifle? Now, I'm not a lawyer, but I'm going to attempt to answer as many of those questions and kind of clear up some of the misinformation because a lot of people are seeing some of the information that's come out as a direct way of saying this is 100% a short-barreled rifle. That's not necessarily the case, but it is something that you should be aware of. I want to say thank you to John J. Crump from AmmoLand.com. He's one of the few actual investigatory journalists when it comes to gun rights and stuff like this. Not many people are going out of their way to actually dig deeper and get more information. So John Crump, thank you for bringing this to my attention. Thank you to bringing this to the attention of everyone else. Let's talk about pistol braces and determining whether or not we're a felon. Keep in mind, I'm not a lawyer. This is just me reading some information and allowing you to hear my opinion on it. Here's the title, ATF singles out 23 SB tactical firearm braces that do not have determination letters. Now, what does this actually mean? So SB tactical is the popular manufacturer of pistol braces like the SBA-3 and the SBA-4. Initially, they approved documentation from the ATF saying that both the SB-15, the first pistol brace, was a legal brace that was not considered a stock. They also went on later to get the MPX PSB. These are the two braces that SB Tactical produces that they have submitted examples to the ATF, and the ATF has come back and said, these are pistol stabilizing braces. Now, SB Tactical also manufactures about 23 other models, including the SBA-3 and the SBA-4. I'm going to refer to those as just the generals because most people that own a pistol brace own one of those too. We are not specifically talking today about any other manufacturer, but some of the information that we talk about might be relevant to those other manufacturers, like the Gearhead Works or some other companies. Whether or not some other companies have ATF determination letters, that's a topic for another day. We're talking solely about SB Tactical and whether or not these make them felony parts, basically making you a felon. At the end of the day, I truly don't care if you break the law. If you see this information and say, hey, if they're making me a felon because of my pistol brace, I've tried to comply, I know a lot of people are probably going to end up putting stocks on their guns. Things that we uh, would definitely never do in the private privacy of our own home, but if you choose to do that, that's on you. I'm just hoping that you are aware if you're breaking the law. I don't care if you break the law. I don't care if you follow the law. I just want to provide some information so that you can make the best decision for yourself. So here's where it goes on. Records received by Amoland News show that on July 18th of 2018, the ATF sent a letter to SB Tactical declaring that only two of their model braces have been approved for use as a pistol stabilizing brace. Those were the SB-15 and the MPX-SB. The SB-15 was the original one that slides over by compression over a smooth pistol buffer tube. The ATF letter states that certain products currently marketed and sold by SB Tactical have not been evaluated nor approved by the ATF and that SB Tactical braces are being marketed and evaluated as approved by the ATF, though in most cases, no evaluations or classifications ever occurred. So basically, here's the initial thing. This is an ATF complaint. They're saying, hey, you guys are advertising all of these braces as, SB as ATF approved because they fit the general criteria or similar characteristics that both of these two the MPX PSB and the SB15 share. The ATF is going on to say that just because your braces that you sell, like the SBA3 and SBA4, have some of the similar characteristics and the intended marketed purpose is for a pistol stabilizing brace, does not necessarily mean that it is a brace and not a stock. The ATF claimed that it has evaluated only the two and that the ATF lister included 23 SB tactical braces, including the super popular SBA-3 that was not submitted nor approved by the ATF, meaning that right now your SBA-3 and your SBA-4 are not approved by the ATF. Does that mean it's a stock? Uh, I don't know. Not necessarily. ATF concluded by warning that SB tactical must cease false advertisement of the products which have not been evaluated nor approved. 
They then go on at a later point in this article to talk about how they use the Wayback Machine to determine that at some point in March of this year, SB Tactical actually removed the language that said ATF compliant. Now, here's the second piece that gets really tricky. According to the agency, in September of 2020, ATF issued a report of technical examination on an unknown shotgun model that has been submitted for classification with an SBA3 brace attached. Now, it says unknown, but that really just means that it's been redacted. They're not sharing that public information. Certain information is, uh, uh, you know, blacked out. So a shotgun that had an SBA3 pistol brace attached to it was determined by the ATF to be a short-barreled shotgun the report specifically notes that the SBA-3 has been previously and repeatedly determined to be a shouldering device, not a stabilizing brace. So does that mean that your specific SBA-3 or SBA-4 on your pistol makes it a short-barreled rifle? Well, we don't necessarily know because specifically there is no direct actual information from the ATF saying, here are the 100% criteria. If it is X, Y, or Z thing, then it makes it X, Y, or Z legality. Here's the background information that talks about some of the legalities of a stabilizing brace and whether it's determined to be a stock or a brace. The type and caliber of the firearm a stabilizing brace is installed on, the weight and length of the firearm, the length of pull when installed. It then goes on to mention the 13 and a half inches as the extreme indicator, but does not necessarily mean that by default, every firearm over or under 13 and a half inches is either a brace or a stock. So it's one of those things that that's a general rule of thumb or a general guideline to maybe consider. The attachment method of the stabilizing brace to include modified stock attachments, extended receiver extensions, and the use of spacers. So is it on a A5 buffer system? Does it use a traditional stock attachment method on the buffer tube? So basically this seems to be specifically targeting or would potentially target the SBA3 or SBA4 because those go on a standard mil spec buffer tube or receiver extension. The objective design features of the attached stabilizing brace accessory to include the function of the accessory when utilized as a stabilizing brace compared to alternative uses as a shouldering device. So if it's more functional as a stock than it is as a brace, that might determine whether or not they would consider it a brace or a stock. They also go then on to talk about appropriate point of aim when utilizing the stabilizing brace. So if you're using a stabilizing brace as it's intended to be used and you have a scope with short eye relief, meaning that there would be no way to actually use the pistol stabilizing brace and look down the sights, that might be something to consider. I've seen many people talk about this in the past. Whether you have a secondary grip, meaning that you can't actually use it with two hands. Now on mine, I have a SBA4 on my other that I do have the ability to grab with two hands with the foregrip and with the pistol stabilizing brace, and that gives me a pretty good grip on it. So then they go on to talk about some of the reasons why that SBA3 on that specific shot one, shotgun was considered an SBS and not just a firearm. When measuring the distance between the center of the trigger of Exhibit 13 and center of the SBA3 accessory rear surface, the submitted firearm had a length of pull of approximately blank inches. They're not listing it specifically when fully extended. ATF considers any firearm with a length of pull of over 13 and a half inches to be an indicator that the firearm is designed to be fired from the shoulder. Therefore, the length of pull consistent with similar shotguns and useful for shouldering of the firearm. The SBA-3 pistol stabilizing brace accessory contains two split rubber flaps and a Velcro, Velcro strap which wrapped around the shooter arm. Unlike the original SB Tactical SB-15 stabilizing brace accessory, the rubber flaps have been greatly reduced in size, resulting in the flaps of the SBA-3 pistol stabilizing brace accessory being nearly ineffectual. An attempt was made to utilize the SBA-3 stabilizing brace accessory in accordance with the manufacturer's stated intent of stabilizing one-handed firing. In the collapse position, the flaps on the SBA-3 pistol stabilizing brace barely fit around the portion of the shooter's arm, providing limited stabilizing support. In the extended position, the flaps on the pistol stabilizing brace accessory are completely ineffective and accessory provides limit limited stabilizing support. Basically, they're going on to say that, hey, look, this meets certain criteria. When you put it on, it is over that length of pull. You can't necessarily use it 
very effectively as an S as a stabilizing brace. So they were using that to consider it a shoulder stock. Okay, so wrapping this all up, what does this mean? What should I do? At the end of the day, I'm not a lawyer, but there's no clear guidance from the ATF. The ATF has not come out and said that every SBA three and every SBA four on a gun is illegal. Now, if I owned personally an SBA three, I might be more hesitant to use that on a gun because the specific language that said that the SBA three specifically has been determined to be a stock and not a stabilizing brace because it can't really be used very well for that. If you wanted to use a brace that was specifically approved by the ATF, I might look more into that. Something like the SB 15, the original pistol stabilizing brace might be more legal. However, at the end of the day, the outcome that I think is going to be a lot more likely for many people, I think many people are going to be putting stocks on their guns and making SBRs. They're going to be making illegal firearms because a lot of people have decided, and I think a lot of people have decided that they aren't going to comply any further. They're not going to go any further. For many people, they are willing to concede and shoot their pistols with stabilizing braces on their guns because that was a legal, or in their mind at the time, legal way for them to shoot their gun, enjoy their firearm, and have a useful gun that was still legal. It was a compromise, but it wasn't worth it. I think a lot of people now, they're going to look at this and say, hey, if the ATF is going to make me a felon, lock me in jail for 10 years, why not actually go through and make a full auto SBR? I'm not saying to do that. Live your own life, make your own choices, uh, you know, don't eat gas station sandwiches. I don't know, uh, some sage wisdom. If you have a pistol brace on your gun and you have something like a scope that you can't use while using it as a stabilizing brace, if you have a brace that has a length of pull of over 13 and a half inches, if you are using bipods or second grips, I might want to read some of the information from the ATF. I'm going to have links to this down below. Make your own decisions. Personally, I'm not going to say what I'm going to do with my own guns. However, this is not the end all be all. Ultimately, right now, there is no statement saying that, hey, SB Tactical, this is and always will be a stock. Therefore, it is and always will be making a rifle that has to be over 16 inches. So I don't know. You're going to want to keep up to date with this. I'm going to have links to this down below. Whether or not this ends up turning us all into felons, only time will tell. But it's important to be aware of the law. Whether or not you choose to follow the law, it doesn't matter to me. I don't care. That's your life decisions, not mine. Go ahead, do whatever you want to do. Dangerous freedom is badass. I'm just asking that you understand what the law is so that you maybe don't get caught with something that you didn't know was illegal and go to jail for something. Because the longer that you go out and interact with people on a daily basis and continue to live your life and show people what gun ownership is all about, the better. That's how we're going to win a culture war. That's how we need to fight this. We are fighting an uphill battle. We need to educate. We need to talk. We need to have normal social interactions with people. We need to show people why we are right in this situation and the ATF and the gun grabbers are wrong. You know the drill. Have fun. Be safe. Stay dangerous. Peace.